and then just writing to his local drive. And although I can't put my hand on my heart and say it will work, it will probably work. Okay. Okay. But when you start thinking about clusters, you know, I mentioned the kind of one-to-one -one thought ratio. Clusters get quite complicated. But you've got multiple machines, and then the you know the the, the barrier between the, the the actual storage and the logical storage gets hazy. Mm -hmm. um, that isn't a scenario that BitLock has been designed to address. What about just plain network drives? Um, I've mapped uh, you know my X drive out to a share. Unless Can I, by virtue of having that mapping, then encrypt that X drive no. with BitLocker? No. Okay. Because it has to be a more of a local physical correct. Case, or managed by an operating system. Correct. That's correct. What you're doing there is you're mapping something else. Is you're mapping. Um, uh, contents are stored in a completely different entity in, in a manner that looks like a drive to you. Mm -hmm. right? But if you look behind the sort of X code of mapping, it's really, you know, whack, whack something, whack something, whack something. Okay. All right, I, I want to be sensitive to your time. I know you've got some other appointments. I, I have two final questions okay. I want to throw at you. Sure. Um, it, I can understand why we would use BitLocker in, say, a laptop, but I'm taking on the road, it's going to be exposed in a taxi cab, an airport. Sure. I mean, there's lots of opportunities for someone. They may or may not know that I work for Microsoft or whatever, but they see a laptop, and that's dollar signs because they can take it in turn, sell that laptop, and make a couple hundred bucks off of it. Sure. But my sensitive data is there, so I understand encrypting that. But it's included with Windows Server. Under what you know, those servers aren't they usually in a data center behind a bunch of locked doors, and they're protected? I mean, why would we bitlock servers? That's a superb question, and I've got some pretty good answers for it too. About a third of pedestal type servers, that's you know, commodity boxes, not blades, but you know, it looks like a, a super duper desktop. About a third of those estimates vary. Live in branch offices. Mm -hmm. What's a branch office? Well, think of you know, a lot of financial, medical institutions, perhaps car insurers, house insurers, banks. A lot of those are branch offices and strip malls. Some of them have branch offices, you know, in 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 your local market store, mm -hmm. right? And the element of physical security there can be pretty low. In fact, sadly, sometimes the level of security is that you know, the guy who polishes the floor has got access to the room in which the servers live. Yeah, I've seen them get unplugged by cleaning crews now and then. So. <laughs> it happens. That's a huge threat. You're absolutely right. You know, if you've got a data center and it's air conditioned and it's you know, glass buildings and, and you know, patrolled by security and so forth, the, the, the chances of, uh, uh, of someone breaking and stealing money is relatively small. But there are millions of branch office servers out there where if someone steals that device, it could have keys to all sorts of kingdoms on it. You know, maybe um, it might be a domain controller, for example. Yeah, there's all kinds of issues that can crop up. Lots. So the first sheer benefit is the threat of what happens if a branch office gets broken into. There's some other interesting scenarios. You, you, you can fulfill there as well, um, where it's interesting to servers, and it's the secure delivery scenario. It's a pet one I have developed, and I really like it. I, I spoke to some customers who a third, believe it or not, of their um, server budget was spent securely delivering the server to a location, a branch office. Why did they spend a third of their budget, like eleven, twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. each? Well, a server, when you, when you provision a server, it's got very important information on it. It's got important data on it. Um, it's got a snapshot of what your security infrastructure looks like. It's, got, it's very, very delicate information. Basically, you've got two choices. You can ship the server as a blank box and, and provision it over a pipe. Well, if it's a branch office, it may not have a very good pipe. No, um, uh, are, you, are you sure you're provisioning the right machine? don't know. Yeah. So the most common option is provision it somewhere and then ship it. Well, well, all that expenditure comes from literally hiring some you know, guy with a gun and a security core type van to turn up, <laughs> put the server in their hands, they drive it across the country, deliver it to someone who signs for it, who then turns on their server. Mm -hmm. They have to do that because of the value of the contents of that box. This is where BitLocker comes in. I mentioned you have this key abstraction layer and the concept of recovery keys. Well, if you activate BitLocker on a server, and by the way, this works for laptops and desktops too, but if you activate BitLocker, you can provision the machine. You could then intentionally delete the key that was on this side of the abstraction layer. In other words, the key that automatically unlocks the machine if you've got a TPM. A effectively forcing the machine into recovery mode, which means until somebody puts the recovery media in, or reads the recovery key out, that disk is effectively a cryptographic brick. Mm -hmm. You can now ship that 